Hey guys, so I'm back from the show and I embraced my inner raven and went straight for all of the shiny things. Um, I did a little bit of damage, I won't lie, um, but I'm really happy with everything I got. Um, I was very much drawn to certain colours which you're going to see um, and a lot of that's to do with some of the inspiration I've been having towards my costume which I'm starting to sort of think about and develop um, some ideas about what I'm going to do for the Goblin Ball so I really wanted to try and get a few things for that and just anything that really um, inspired me I guess like I like I like the Craft and Quilt show because it opens up some different types of things that I may not look for but when you see them in the flesh you know you can um, touch and see you know clearly and work out whether it's something you want to use and then you can see people you know um, using some of the things as well and see you know whether it's something that you would actually use in your work that sort of thing so anyway let's get going so if you watch my footage you'll see the little make and take um, altered art project that I did how good's that I love the colors like that started out just like so like basic you know plastic rhinestones and whatever stuck onto it and you know it just comes out so pretty so I definitely recommend giving altered art a try if you haven't already because even if you just um, did some of the painting techniques onto something I mean you know beautiful I'm just gonna fish things out of my bag um, in no certain order because uh, I've got a lot of different stuff in there. Actually, I'll show you the bag first because I love the bag. And a big thank you to Bernadette because it was the last one and she was about to buy it. And I was like, oh, I want one too. And they said, oh, that's the last one. So um, she's like, oh, don't worry, I'll get a different one. And, um, you know, I'm like, are you sure, are you sure? And, yeah, she was happy to do that. And uh, But this is like, I love this. Oh nice big crafty bag keep calm and keep creating um, very nice kind of canvasy bag and it was perfect because I got it right before we went in and put all my goodies into the bag as we went along alrighty so I told you I got sucked in by some sparkly things and I've really been like loving a lot of the stuff from this Nouveau brand I've realized so I don't know I might have to open this because you won't probably see all the glitter but you could probably see that that side and then so it's called peacock feathers which is about like talking about the color um, colorway of this I'm gonna try and open it Ooh. look at those beauties how pretty and they're really interesting shapes as well um, you know instead of your standard glitter shapes you've got these um, confetti sort of shape ones you've got the these which are butterflies with this beautiful purple purpley teal iridescence uh, these which are just little hexagons and you know the stars and I just I just loved the colors of that they had some other um, color variations I think there was a gold and silver sort of one um, I'm not sure if there was another one I didn't see I was mainly mainly looking at those two color variations but this one just stood out to me because I just loved the different iridescent colors and the shapes and I uh, thought it was really nice so and you know what I'm like with glitter um, I'm terrible. I get sucked in. I'm, I don't even know exactly what I'm using that for. But having said that, I do use um, glitter in a lot of different projects. So it won't go to waste. It will be used. Now, I went to one of the stalls. It was funny thinking about the stalls and how I, I found I was going to the same stalls as last year because there was a lot of um, the same shops that were... At the, at the show and they all still like spoke to me because I guess I just liked the things that they had 
So I went to this one that was um, the Laces and Ribbons store. Starlace.com.au it says. Which is interesting because I could have sworn he said he wasn't online. So uh, star, star with two R's lace.com.au I'll put the details up there for you um, and yes yeah, so I went to this one and of course I was I suddenly pounced on the thing that was the most expensive lace that they had <laughs> I didn't realize it at the time and then the uh, the gentleman told me yeah that's that's the most expensive one we we stock I'm like mm, okay but I mean you can see why right like look at how how beautiful how absolutely glorious is that so I ended up uh, luckily they did half meters and I think it was I think it was $28 a meter for this lace and but he would he was able to do half meters and so I got half meter in three different colors this is sort of, it looks a little green, uh, greeny gold, um, so it's somewhere between sort of a brassy, bronzy gold colour. It's just beautiful. And then this pale lilac-y colour, absolutely glorious. Um, so I, what I will be doing with that most likely is cutting sections and making hair pieces from them. I've used lace like this before that is the double layered lace and I really like that for hair pieces because you can um, get some real nice three-dimensional shape in there and just the the color is stunning. So it looks absolutely beautiful for um, hair pieces and beadwork and stuff so with along with that I got this which is hand dyed piece of lace with little leaves on it uh, that was 650 I think per, per meter and the color is just lovely and slightly graduated being hand dyed it's never going to be uniform which I like that because then it looks more natural I'll use this with some flowers in hair pieces or necklaces or what have you um, you know add a couple of leaves in here and there you know I could even do a choker I suppose if I wanted to with leaves but yeah I really loved that they gave me some free pins as well <laughs> Oh. This was a, another beautiful shop that was there that had different rolls of lace and things and they also had these uh, crystal chain lengths um, that were, they had different thicknesses but I haven't got any of the or much of the 2mm, I might have some, I'm not sure but um, I don't have a lot, mainly I think I have the 3mm, so that's a black and gold one there um, a b crystal with the gold setting uh, this is a red sort of cyan red in a gold setting and this is a like pale sapphire blue in a silver setting and they were $4.50 per metre, so a really good price. They're not Swarovski, obviously, at that price. Um, I am actually not entirely sure if they're Czechoslovakian either. Uh, I don't think it said. Yeah, no, so it didn't say uh, on it, I did, and I didn't ask, to be honest. I should have, but I'm not sure if it's Czechoslovakian. I can only assume it's just a generic brand. Um, not sure. But very nice and if you haven't used um, the chain and you do embroidery work then I highly recommend you give it a go because it is so easy to stitch into things. Um, not always easy, I shouldn't say easy because sometimes um, the thread can catch on the prongs of the setting so you do have to be a little bit careful on that 
uh, in that regard but it just it goes around cabochon so nicely you can um, use it on its own you can edge your pieces with it um, you can just use it in any way you like and make lovely um, flowing patterns with it or keep it straight lined if you want if you haven't watched my um, embroidered spiderweb necklace tutorial give that a watch and you'll see me using some of this crystal chain in that that necklace is almost entirely the crystal chain so you know that will give you an idea of how it how you sew it on and what you can use it for um, but I've used it in all sorts of ways um, I started out mainly using it as edging for pieces instead of doing uh, seed beading I would edge things with this uh, and then I've used it in all sorts of other designs since then so definitely love it less exciting but definitely needed was a pair of scissors and I have used these particular type of scissors before the needle craft scissors I might have even bought them from the show last time as to uh, as well come to think of it uh, but you know after a while they start to become a little blunt and then you do need to get a new pair and mine are st sort of starting to get not as sharp as they were and you know I need very very sharp very small scissors for the work that I do to cut around like edging and a lot of the um, cutouts can be very you know tricky um, you know and you've got to get really close to the beadwork and stuff so you do want a nice sharp small pair so I've I've liked those in the past all right so from the store that I did my um, make and take uh, altered art piece I, I bought a couple of things from them as well uh, I think they were called Zyneri I've got the receipt here um, I'll put the name up there uh, I know that Bernadette did get some footage of the stall while I was doing the um, painting and stuff like that so um, I'll get the name and when I edit all of the footage um, but I bought some beautiful stuff now I've seen the art alchemy paints and things before and I do have a couple of the paints that I use for my packaging in particular um, but also just for other craft projects um, because they they're just beautiful metallics um, they have beautiful sort of geochrome colors um, and some really interesting uh, like wax rubs and stuff and I was using some of the wax rubs and really enjoyed using them and I have got a gold one at, that I already um, use and love so I thought it'd be nice to get the purple which was just beautiful color like very vibrant and more of a brassy color um, which I think will be good for like anything kind of steampunk or just a bit antique to looking and that sort of thing so uh, looking forward to using those and I also saw these really nice mica powders I haven't played around with mica powders too much so I'm just looking forward to giving that a try seeing what I want to use them for maybe coloring some polymer clay with it or brushing it over things or mixing it with a medium I really don't know yet but um, we'll give it a go all right now from the same shop that I got the crystals from the crystal chain from um, I saw these little beauties now they are actually acrylic but they look so much to me like the Czechoslovakian hand-painted glass buttons um, but maybe a little bit smaller and just a lovely sort of design I think they just could be really interesting to use in things um, and you know a nice flat back on them they do have holes to sew through as well by the look of it or I guess you know um, to use as components with jump rings if you wanted to do it that way I imagine I will most likely use it in embroidery work because I don't know I just tend to use stuff like that that way more so now I could not 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 go past these um, so I saw this lovely stag stamp beautiful um, and this don't let anyone dull your sparkle 
And I thought these two would be great on my packaging um, because they're both just so me. And I picked them up and Bernadette saw them and, and before even me saying anything, she's like, yeah, that's so you. So, um, and gosh, they had some beautiful stamps. This Lavinia Stamps Company, um, I'm going to have to look into because I tell you what, they are beautiful. They have some lovely stamps. Jen got, um, I think just the one stamp actually, but it was just this beautiful design. Um, uh, I think it was just little flower stems or something like that. And they just looked so lovely. They had little mushrooms. They had these beautiful fairies, but really well done. And, um, you know, just very different to anything I'd seen before. Um, not your typical, I don't know, a lot of times when I see fairies and things, um, to me, the style of the drawing is very similar, whereas these had much more whimsy. They looked very different. They had this swirling hair and um, I don't know, they're really great. So I think I'll be, you know, keeping an eye out for st other stamps of theirs. And if I do get into doing a bit more stamping, then I will definitely pick some up. Um, I got some embossing powders because I'm planning to use these on my packaging, those two stamps. Um, so I've got a white and a black. White for the stag, obviously, and black. I do have some black, but it is good to get some extra, and there was a two for one. So um, I got those two, and that's for the um, Don't Let Anyone Dull Your Sparkle, um, because I was going to get a color or a sparkly one, but it might be difficult to read it. So I thought I'll just stick with black um, so that you can read it. But I did get some glitter to put over the stag. So what I'll probably do is emboss him first and then put some white over the top. I could have probably picked up a white embossing, a sparkly white embossing powder. Uh, that store didn't have it so I didn't pick that up. I might down the track but I think this will be fine and this, um, I don't know if you can see the lovely AB color of the glitter. Um, that's the brand there. It just looks lovely and fine. Um, so it's a crafts for you glitter dust in clear, you know, with an AB finish and just super fine glitter. So looks really lovely. All right, so I stopped off and um, I think it was called Arnold's Scrapbooking. Let me see. Arnold's Scrapbook and Craft Supplies. There was a store there that I looked at last time and they just have all this glitter and wonderful things. In fact, I think the first glitter I showed you um, came from that stall as well. So, but with that, I also got some of these um, stickles. Oh, I'll try and actually show you the colors. Um, stickles, glitter, glue things. I use these in my packaging, but again, I also use things like this for crafts. Um, they're sort of a three-dimensional a three-dimensional paint and you know they're only um, I think they were around about the three dollars thirty each because they had like a, again a bundle deal so you know I ended up getting a few different colors I figured um, some of the glitter ones would be nice for either packaging or for my um, outfit for the Goblin Ball I'm going to talk about that more in a different video because this video is going to get long otherwise. Um, but yeah, I do have some ideas and you know, you might have seen a lot of purples and coppers and brassy colors as well. Um, so those are sort of the color themes that might be happening for my um, costume. It just depends how it all comes together, I guess. So... Um, and the other two things I got from that Arnold scrapbook um, shop were a couple of glitter items again. Haha, <laughs> so surprising. So it's a lot of, like, that's, I, I guess they don't have a lot of beads at this particular show. So that's why there's not a lot of beads, well, there's no beads actually in this um, particular haul. 
Uh, I didn't really find anything bead-wise that I was, except for that pendant, that I was really keen on. So glitter was one of the main things and paints and other things like that were what I was sort of looking at. But anyway, I saw this beautiful glitter. Now I hope the camera will pick up just how beautiful that is. Um, it is a lovely sort of perfect hexagon shaped glitter with the crystal AB color. Um, it was not cheap. It was $16 for that. Um, and it's by pa Papericious. Yeah, I'll show you. Papericious, crystal clear. Um, yeah, so, but really, really pr pretty um, glitter. I think it'll look lovely in a really special project because it does have that um, beautiful hexagon shape that I think will look lovely. Um, and I also got another embossing powder which is a, a coppery tinsel. Hopefully you can see that. Um, just a lovely colour that will suit my packaging which is what I use a lot of the embossing stuff for but also just something slightly different to what I have because I've got mainly sort of golds and um, I think I have a matte brown and a black so I'm just trying to branch out a little bit with some other colors so yeah uh, now this stuff was really interesting they had these so hopefully you can see the colors there um, so you know you've got a goldy a black with sort of a gold flash a really rich bronzy color um, this like silver like cool silver color and then just that fuchsia pink pinky purple color now these are fabric paints um, she had some examples of them being used and you could shear it out quite a lot if you wanted to um, or I'd imagine you could do it quite thick as well I figured these would be fantastic for my jewelry um, you know I use a lot of material and fabrics and fibers and things in my work and I dye a lot of them but this is a different way to color them where I could actually paint it on thickly have a metallic finish and put some real you know interesting details so um, you know I got like three of the colors I feel like would work with a lot of things you know you've got your silver you know the bronzy and the blacky gold color uh, you know quite I want to say neutral but you know what I mean kind of could work with other colors a lot of different colors and the pinky color um, again maybe the costume um, maybe it depends so what I will say about the costume because I'm going to show you something that is going to definitely be part of it um, as you guys know, I have an Augur pendant that I'm going to turn into an embroidered necklace. Um, and I'm really wanting to make it a, a dark crystal themed uh, one. I want to put in Augur's, um, you know, planetarium, I guess, um, where she's got like the great conjunction, um, you know, mechanical planets and everything. And so I'm wanting to sort of capture that and have Augur the pendant in the center um, and maybe some you know crystal dark crystal elements and things like that but at the bottom of it I really wanted a crystal that was just wow you know like a a real um, like it looked like a shard it almost looked magical um, almost had a glow to it I wanted that real mm -hmm. fuchsia purple color as well um, and so I'm hoping this will work out because I was just so struck by this I'm going to take it out of and it wasn't cheap look at that it's a Swarovski crystal shard um, the design is a new one. My camera just stopped me there. Um, yeah, so it's a, apparently a new design by uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier. I think they said designed this. And I think trying to make it really look like a natural crystal. 
Um, it has a, a little bit of matted part in there. It's got that real, um, I think, do they call the color volcano? You know, where it has all of the colors in there, but it definitely has those purples and fuchsia colors from the dark crystal showing. So that's why I was very drawn to this um, pendant, and I want that at the bottom of my necklace. Yeah, so I'm hoping that looks good um, for the piece. It was $32, I believe. Um, these prices I'm giving you, of course, are in Australian dollars because I'm in Australia. Um, but you know what? If you guys like that, hopefully you can re really get a good look at it. It does need a bit of a polish. I think it's got a little bit of a smudginess on it, but... Um, so, but the colors, you know, absolutely gorgeous, just magical. I think that at the bottom of the necklace is just going to be to die for. A lot better than the things that I had bought previously. I just wasn't really satisfied with any of them and just couldn't quite find what I wanted. So this is much more um, in keeping with what I was sort of picturing at the bottom of the necklace. I think that's it. All right, so I think that's it. Um, I had to just have a little check in all my bags to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. You know when you're at these shows and you just start buying things and you sort of lose track sometimes of how many things you buy over the day. Um, so I wasn't sure if there was anything else sort of hiding out there, but pretty sure we've looked at everything now. I'm really happy with all the bits and pieces that I got. I think I've got some really fun um, things to try out and you know I've got some really fun and interesting projects hopefully coming very soon. Um, I'm trying to really catch up on some things. Um, as you know I was unwell for a bit there and sort of um, got behind on my filming and things which just means sometimes I don't necessarily have the time to do big project videos and things because they, they take a really long time. So what I'm really try, trying to do is catch up so I can start bringing uh, a few more of those to you guys and start working on like the costume, start working on this necklace. Um, I might even do a bit of a visual, uh, not a visual, like a, a video diary of the progress of the um, costume and sort of you know, so that you guys can sort of see the progress as I go along. Um, it might need to be in installments um, or maybe as I create certain elements, I might do a video on that. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, but if you don't want to miss out on any of that fun times, hit that subscribe button. Um, you'll get my, much more antics from me, all the creative goodness that you could ever want. Um, I have a lot coming. Uh, I just need the time to do it. I need to win the lottery or something so I've got I can just do this. <laughs> um, anyway, thanks so much for tuning in guys and I'll see you next time. Bye craft nerds.